Hello everyone and welcome back to my efficient design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode I hope to uh, bring our Kerbal that is currently in orbit around Duna uh, into orbit around Ike or at least passing by Ike to do some science and then return him back home. But I started off on this screen because I wanted to show you something. Apparently I allowed some contracts to expire without doing them. I didn't even realize that their uh, timing was uh, so tight, but actually it was because I had time warped. Because I was time warping all the way to Duna, that ended up uh, pushing us to day 119, and at that point some of the contracts expired. I, had, I should have done them before uh, time warping so much. So the LVT45 uh, test and of course that was at a particular altitude and particular speed. Same with the radio mount parachute and uh, 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 the solid fuel booster, the small one. And so yeah, uh, I don't feel too bad about uh, uh, neglecting those contracts because uh, uh, they, they were very peculiar. But the result is that our reputation has taken a little bit of a hit. So I wanted to update you on that. Now without further ado, let's get back to Duna. And here is Jorvi Kerman and uh, Duna 1. And we want to try and get him over to Ike so that we can fulfill some more contracts. Uh, we, we've we achieved orbit around Duna. Uh, Duna trans, uh, the transmit thing, we're actually going to recover the scientific data, so that's fine. And we're not going to do the other two. So we need to do the achieve orbit around Ike. I guess we've got to try to achieve orbit. Let's see. Um... Hmm, how much fuel do we have? Okay, well let me do a quick delta V check and then come back to you with uh, what we're actually going to do around Ike. Okay, so I have a, that I have us at 1,862 meters per second at delta V. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, randomly add a maneuver and see how much it'll take to get back home. So align with current orbit like that. Oh, that's the wrong way around. Oh yeah, no, that's the right way around. Okay, good. And so we just uh, see how much it takes to just hit uh, Kerbin's orbit like that. So it'll take 800. So we have about 1,000 left over. Let's see how much it takes to uh, transfer to Ike. I think I'll go with this version and so we're gonna go around Duna one more time unfortunately we are burning uh, from apoapsis which is the least pleasant thing to do but it seems like a good uh, go around and we'll hit uh, Ike it'll try to boost our orbit but we'll counter that maybe I shouldn't let it boost our orbit like that very interesting orbits Ike tends to produce. Okay, we'll just go with this. Oop, up, up, shoot. Wow, that was the worst pass of a maneuver node I've done in a while. Don't tell me about Kerbal Alarm Clock. This is not modded and also I already know about it and use it okay so here we go let's uh, let's let's try from here yeah okay now I'm gonna do a little bit of an adjustment here because I actually want a periapsis of some kind. This is just an inclination change, so accuracy is not a biggie. We really, all we need is uh, periapsis is what I'm looking for here. That should be close enough. We can uh, do the rest once we get into Ike's sphere of influence. So, Ike encounter time. Okay, so this is what our Ike orbit looks like right now. 
very suggestive of an orbit, but not quite there yet. First, we need to get that periapsis that I wanted. Unfortunately, it's not letting me click on the orbit at all. That's okay. From out here, we need a radial burn of some kind. Let me just quickly do a test first. Yeah, that seems to be right. Uh, that's costing more than I thought it should. Can you, can you, yeah, okay, now let me. Okay, so it's like that. I don't know how close uh, near to Ike will be. I hope it's around 10 kilometers at that closest. We'll go for, because Ike is a bit lumpy. I hope I don't hit anything. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Okay, so we're going to go for about a 10 kilometer periapsis. That's fine. And now to orbit. A loose orbit should be okay. So we'll go like that. Where is Ike? Well, there's Duna. And there's Ike. Okay. So. Jovi Kerman, uh, why don't we have you EVA right now? Looks like uh, craft is stable. High over Ike, good. Keep that board. And I think we already did the crew report, and I'm not gonna double up on that. Okay. Very rocky terrain, Ike, and very tempting to land on it right now, but this is a test and our first interplanetary attempt with the reusable system, so let's not push things here. We probably will need some fuel once we get back to try and make our landing as pleasant as possible without landing too far away from, from uh, KSC. Alright, so now we are orbiting Ike, and we're pretty close to periapsis. Jovi's worried, but I'm gonna kick him out of the airlock anyway. Uh, near Ike, good. That's what we wanted. And let's see if we can get a temperature reading as well. Yes, we can. Keep that data. Okay, so uh, that should be all the science we've got. Alright, now we have to engineer a way to get Jovi back home. In order to do that, I'm going to lift the periapsis. There's a reason I kept my apoapsis high. And what I want to do is I want to be able to time warp. And that means, of course, we could just go back to the tracking station. That would be the more efficient way to go. But I'll just uh, do it uh, from here, I think. We'll see if that's enough to get us a good time warp. Okay, maybe that's enough, maybe that's not. Let's just verify. We got orbit and we will have to deal with uh, recovering that data. Okay. Now, yeah, I'll, I'll leave Jovi there and let's see about our, our, our return. We need Kerbin 75 degrees behind Duna, so he's going to be hanging out there a long time. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about food. A little bit disorienting with the nap ball going around like that. That's gonna have to go even faster. Oh, it doesn't let me go to the top one. Okay, you know what? Maybe we'll do it from the tracking station after all. I don't want to try and burn any more fuel in order to boost the orbit even further. Okay, so uh, tracking station. Okay, just eyeballing it. That looks about right to me.
Okay, now let's plot the way back home for Jorvi Kerman. What we are going to do is we're going to try to boost to... Yeah. We have to boost out of uh, Ike's Gravity Well first. And we can do that a number of ways. I'm tempted to try and use Duna's Duna's gravity to our benefit if I can get the periapsis close enough to Duna. I don't know. Let's let's uh, see what happens if I do this and then boost out like this. Yep, my estimate of 75 degrees seems to be a bit off. Well, let's let's just see how much this encounter costs. So 43 there, this one 877. Well, more or less what I thought it would be. I think we can do better than that though. Oh, okay, wait. Ah, that's that's what I wanted. Right, that that's the orbit I was looking for. Okay, now let's boost out. Okay, now oh, that's pretty good. So, let's see how much this costs. 802. So this is somewhat illustrative of the Oberth effect uh, in that uh, from way out here we had uh, 40 odd combined with 870-ish uh, about a 900 meters per second burn and now we're looking at 860. It'd be much better if I could burn from here from periapsis and maybe I should try that. I I'm gonna take a little bit of time to try and get a better maneuver than I've got right now. Uh, part of the problem is we could do it for much less uh, if I had timed it properly. Uh, I think uh, 500 to 600 for a departure from Duna is possible without uh, having this uh, be mistimed. But let me hold off on this and try and find a better location to do this at. Uh, it might not be possible. Okay, so this is not quite as close an approach. Let's see how much it costs. Uh, 796 and 61. And we're coming up on the Ike departure maneuver. So we'll do that. Uh, let me just double check that we can't do a uh, temperature reading on uh, high over Ike. Yeah, we can't. Okay. Okay, Jovi was either adjusting his helmet or waving goodbye to Ike just now, so let's handle that part. I'll readjust this maneuver node after we pass the periapsis, which is slightly low, and that's intentional. I guess it's not technically atmospheric on this part. Well, that's good. Okay. As long as it's as close as possible. So let's adjust this. You can see how far off I was. And that's due to uh, bad timing 
Uh, so the angle between Duna and Kerbin was not the right phase angle. Okay, I've gotten the Kerbin periapsis down to 31 kilometers, assuming we can do the burn correctly, which we, we won't quite do it that correctly, I think. But uh, let's hope. In that case, we won't even have to do a mid-course uh, plane change. The reason we can do that, of course, is because it so happens that we're going to be meeting Kerbin at our ascending node. So you can see the descending node here. And since we're going to be crossing Kerbin's orbit right there, that's why we can get as close as possible to it. Uh, if we were anywhere else on uh, Kerbin's orbit encountering it, uh, that wouldn't work out because there's a 0.6 degree difference between us and Kerbin. Of course, the worst case scenario would have been if we were hitting it right here, in which case there's no way we'd even get an encounter probably. Okay, so 44 minutes. Don't know exactly how long this burn will take. I'm going to give it a minute on one side and a minute on the other. So let's try this. Ah, uh, no, that's, that was too soon. Let me throttle down. Jorvi has an... It makes interesting decisions about when he's worried. I'm not too sure what his reasoning is. May he's worried that we're gonna be out of fuel. We're gonna be cutting, but he, we are going to be cutting it close. Oh, well, now he's happy. Did he just hear the thunder of the engines and not know what was going on or something? Well, now he's thrilled. May he's figured it out. Okay, that's good. That'll do quite nicely. Alright, and we've still got some fuel left over. Now, of course, the trick is that we don't know where we're landing right now at Kerbin. And even when we get there, it's going to be a little bit tricky to figure it out. But uh, let's have a look. And so, uh, out we go into interplanetary space again. Have we... I don't know if we've had anybody EVA in interplanetary space, have we? I don't think so. I forget if we did that in the last uh, on the approach leg. Okay, well I'm gonna have to try that. Up, oh, tried to do the transition between Duna sphere influence and interplanetary space carefully, but it's knocked us into a Kerbin periapsis of 122. I uh, knew it wouldn't uh, be so easy, but let's. Let me double check whether I missed this part before. Hi over the sun, keep data board. Yeah, I did. I had missed it. Let me check the thermometer. No. Okay, well that's about it. Is it just me or was the EVA report high over the sun more important than the ones around Duna? I'm not too sure I approve of that. Okay, uh, I'm not going to correct our periapsis out here. We're going to do that once we get within Kerbin Sphere of Influence. Okay, so here's our approach to Kerbin, and we do need to get closer. Uh, there's really no... I mean, we could try and air break to orbit, but that's probably not such a great idea, because I wouldn't be... oh boy. I wouldn't be guaranteed to be able to uh, bring him in then. So we're going to try and get as close as possible ensuring uh, retrieval. Well, not as close as possible. I don't want him uh, crashing into uh, Kerbin even though uh, that's, I mean, survivable in this case. I still want to at least pretend that 
re-entry heat and g-forces might be a thing. We'll just do it from out here. There we go. Because it's cheaper. And now we've got a uh, arrow breaking maneuver. Let's take a let's focus on focus on There we go. And see where we're going to end up. Hmm. Looks like completely the wrong place, right? This is the opposite side of the planet from the KSC. Uh, should I use error breaking calculator to try and get the right place? I guess we're we're doing efficient design bureau and all that, so let's try and do this a little bit more accurately. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna use error breaking calculator and to see. I'm gonna try and bring it into an apoapsis of uh let's say a hundred and 20 kilometers. Uh, it might be, well, yeah. Let's see what it has to say anyway. Alright, so I'll be back with you with the numbers. Oh, that's funny. It says my air breaking periapsis should be uh, 32.5. I didn't think it'd be that high. But uh, you can't, uh, you can't disregard the math. Well, since even turning gives me variation of a whole kilometer here. I'm gonna have to wait till I'm closer before trying to raise it. There we go. Okay, that's pretty close to the number that the calculator gave me. So now let's see if we end up with uh, uh, apoapsis of 120 kilometers as I asked for. If we do, then maybe we can land a little bit closer to the KSC, but that'll depend if... Oh, well, the, oh wait! Oh, I forgot rotation of the planet. Um, you know, that's still fine. That, that's, that, might, might be, that might be exactly what I want. In two hours, the KSC will rotate to about here. If we can get the apoapsis to 120, I can then do a subsequent burn to uh, drop that further, a retro burn, and then we'll be able to get close to. But our inclination is going to be a little bit off. There's no way we're going to hit the KSC anyway. But at least we'll be on the right side of the planet. Okay, so let's try this. Time to re enter. The atmosphere of Kerbin. Okay, we've got drag. We have flame effects. We have a change in our orbit based on the camera tilt. And then we have an orbit. Where did the KSC go? Uh, no, it's in the dark. Oh, no, it's right here. Okay. Alright, well, looking okay. Let's hope this slows down a bit, though. Trick of error breaking cal calculator, though, is that uh, if you're too deep into the atmosphere initially, it might be a little bit off because of that. And we were, we already had a periapsis very deep in the atmosphere. Ah, uh, uh, we're going below 120. That's not good. Right, now it's all crappy.
I suppose we could prograde burn. We've got control here. And get a little bit closer to KSC like that. Like so. Again, not something you would do with a real-life rocket with uh, real aerodynamics and real deadly re-entry, but, but hey, this is why occasionally it is fun to play default KSP, because you get away with, uh, you get away with a few things that aren't quite realistic. Let me do one more. A little burst here. Okay. I think that'll get us close, though not I'm not sure about that. Let's see. Unfortunately in dark oh we want to reorient the other way around. Woo! Sure, be completely unconcerned about this while maneuvering. Okay, key atmosphere interface point. Yeah, right around the the right uh, longitude there. Definitely not the right latitude. water landing again. Okay, G-Force is reasonably mild for our Kerbal. A little bit far away from the KSC, further away than I thought I'd be. But better than our initial approach had it. Okay, I think we're good for parachute deployment. Don't know what that sound was. Um, landing gear down for to cushion the LV-909. Okay, here we go. Parachute is open, parachutes are open, 5.4 meters per second, plenty of buffer on the on the speed. Okay, oh, well okay, flopped over, but uh, still recoverable. Okay, so let's uh, go through it. Uh, EV report, hi near Duna, hi near Ike, hi over the sun, uh, temperature scan near Duna, near Ike, recovery of a vessel, and the crew report. Next, so that was about 660 signs. Uh, we recovered these parts at a 90.9% value, A-, and uh, that was worth 11,729 funds. Good. Jovi Kerman came back. That's a 5.1, uh, 5.7 uh, point uh, boost to our reputation, and since we lost some for failing those contracts, we needed that. So, there you have it. Uh, we brought everything back. We got quite a lot of science. Let's take a quick look at our tech tree. So this is the state of our tech tree now, and thanks to Jorby Kerman's bravery, in uh, pretty extreme circumstances. We can look for perhaps other... Well, we've got uh, size... Well, let's let's aim for some landings. So maybe the seismometer is a thing that we need. And we don't have enough uh, science to unlock the gravioli yet. 
But yeah, we can aim for some landings. Uh, so I wanted to see some smaller probes and such. And so maybe these... Uh, actually, Minmus... It'd be good to send something to Minmus with these, or even the moon. So let's unlock that. We're gonna go smaller. I'm a little bit tired of using the the main command module, the Mark 1. We need a lander cam. So I'm gonna unlock this one. Ah, the claw. Well, we don't have enough for it now. We can't unlock any of these just yet. Probably good to save some of that for later. Ladders would have been nice, but uh, we'll go to some low gravity areas so that uh, that won't be a problem. Let's get a few airplane parts. I've been wanting to do that as well. Okay, so uh, that's the state of our tech tree. And uh, with the successful Duna flyby mission done, uh, we'll look forward to what is going to happen next with these Kerbals. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.